Hello, loves. It's me, your boy, Dick Swagger, giving you an updated paint tutorial because it's been like two or three years. Time isn't real. Things are a nightmare. I think in the last paint video I did, it was also like at a time where things were a lot. I was just in a good mood today, which is not rare these days. <laughs> um, anyways. <laughs> So I thought I'd give you an update on how I do my paint, and it is a lot faster. Again, it's going to take practice to get to the level of speed that I'm currently at, and it's just because I've done this paint on my face so, 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 so many times within the last couple of years. This is the mug that I inherited from my father. From my dear old daddy. Ford Sinclair. And this is their paint technique mixed in with some of my techniques and stuff and thought I would show the clash, especially because things are really rough right now. So take it away, no makeup dick. Here we go. Ah, uh, uh, all right. Safety first. Let's put our hair back so we don't get grease paint in it. I just want to shave them off again, but I literally can't. And it makes me so angry. I should put some red balm on. Fair warning, all of my supplies are disgusting, for I am a gremlin, and I belong in the garbage. In the garbage. Starting with step one, a primer. Just pretend it's clean. Um, the inside of it is clean, at least. So, first things first, I'm turning 31 in two days. Oh my god. And so I have some crevasses that need filling, and so I fill them with this poreless putty primer. This is also gonna depend on what type of skin type you have. I have combo, so I am very dry, like around my mouth and nose, but then I get oily in my T-zone. I typically put the putty primer in where like my laugh lines kind of are starting to form. There, you can see them, but I did this for my normal makeup too. I put a little bit of putty primer there. So I put it on my laugh lines, I put it right here and right here and anywhere else that's kind of like when your skin is dry is going to be very emphasized and then I just kind of melt that in or like press it in I guess sometimes I'll do it under the eyes too just because I get very dry under my eyes and this kind of helps with that now that we've got the primer on uh <laughs> So this is Krylon. You kind of have to use Krylon or a stick foundation like it for this method to work. Again, so this is my dad, uh, Vaud Sinclair's way of painting, but this is sort of like imperative to the process of this, to the technique, because it depends on the base being thick and malleable enough but thick enough to where you're not going to wipe off all the foundation underneath. Let me, it's, it's easier if I just show you. We're gonna go in kind of ham with this and just put it all over our face and a little bit down our neck too. Okay now that we're nice and lathered we're gonna take our sponge and bounce that into our pores. Drag it down, <laughs> drag it down. So that your neck contour is gonna blend seamlessly. Once we do the contour, whatever else is underneath, we can take that off with a makeup wipe. Also, you can use that to like sharpen your contour too, or just like powder the ever living crap out of it so that it doesn't get all over your clothes. I'm gonna put some eye primer on, this is from Milani. And now we are egg. So the biggest difference between the way I used to paint and the way I learned from VOD and how that completely changed my paint was at this point, you know, we have the foundation down, then I would go in with cream contour and then I would powder everything down and then I would go back over it with powder contour. And the difference is you don't powder anything down, you don't go in with cream contour, you go straight in with powder contour. And because the base is not set, because Krylon is so thick and creamy, that's how you get the incredible blend when you put the powder contour because it kind of like glides over the cream but it doesn't break it up too much. And this is why I was freaking out so much the first time I used their technique because Vaud had literally told me this like a year or two prior of like, oh, you don't need to powder your foundation down before you put contour or whatever. And I'm just like, yes, you do, because that's how the beauty influencers on YouTube taught me how to do my makeup back in like 2000. 
eight or something. I don't know. You know what I mean? I was like, my life is a lie. But yeah, so that made like the biggest difference in my paint was like going on top of cream foundation that is not set with powder contour. Anyways, let's continue. Oh, uh, let me just fix my lip because this is driving me nuts. Am I beautiful now, mother? <laughs> Jenny Nicholson. Okay, that's better. We're going in with the first layer of contour, and that's gonna be two to three shades darker than your natural skin tone, whatever your natural skin tone is. I, uh, God, all my makeup is so disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, maybe I should have prepped for this video more, but fuck it. Seize the day, seize the moment, and that's what we're doing. It's 2023, baby. I'm gonna be a new man, you know? Uh, after this, I will be. So this is the contour palette that Vod suggested to me initially, which is like the NYX one. I love it. The main shade that I use is like pretty much gone. If you are my skin tone, Essence makes one in lighter skin. That's the name. This is a good dupe for that if you're out of this. But I also use the darkest shade as well for the deeper contour. The first brush you should be using is a sort of a fluffy, tapered, fluffy brush like this, huh? Right? Yeah? So we're gonna go in with the lightest so far. We're gonna go under the lips. I go directly under to give my lips more of a pout. I'm sure you can see that's already made a world of difference. Ooh! And then after that, you're gonna sweep kind of in a rainbow motion from the center back and forth. And that's gonna give you more of a pronounced chin. You kind of wanna like focus on the main shadow being at the tippy top and then kind of like blending it outwards. Next, I like to go into my philtrum or something. I think that's what it's called. because typically masculine uh, faces usually have like a deeper set philtrum. God, is that the word? I really should have prepped more for this. Then we're gonna do this contour sort of like within the smile lines. And it's weird when you look at pictures of like more masculine faces, almost like their, their top lip is usually more pronounced and jutting forward a little bit. So uh, you guys smile like this and just fill in all of that. You're gonna concentrate the majority of the shadow on the top of the line and then kind of like blend it downwards. Uh-oh. Another reason that it's good that you didn't set your foundation is that it makes it really easy to wipe away when you make mistakes, which we will because we're human. Nobody's perfect. I'm gonna work it. See how it's almost like a gradient? All right, see how that makes it a little more pronounced? You also don't wanna to get too close to these ridges on the tops of your, like above your lips. You wanna leave those kind of like lighter to again, like uh, emphasize the philtrum. And we're gonna be going over that with highlight in a second. Now we're gonna do the insides of like the corners of your mouth. And this just kind of like exaggerates your lips and makes them look a lot bigger. A little something like that and then we'll deepen it up with the darker colors and black as well in the end we're gonna actually go to the cheeks next all right thing is when you're doing more of like a masculine face shape the whole thing is about making it look more square and angular so we got to kind of like bring up the cheekbones a little bit and make them really cut we're gonna be using a special contour brush like this one that's like at a slant and another thing i learned from vod was you wanna pack the contour on the bottom of it and use it like this, sort of, at a slant. Packing the contour on the bottom of the brush is going to give more of a gradient going this way. Does that make any sense? Try to aim for the bottom of the brush to hit above your ear, however high you want your cheekbones to be, but that's where I do it. And you wanna sweep. Ooh. 
And then if you're getting too much up here, we're going to be going in with highlighter and that will like kind of cut it out a little bit more. Okay, something like that. This one's a little out of hand, but like I said, you can take your sponge with the foundation on it and just kind of cut that a little bit more if you want it to be a little more symmetrical. See? That looks better. See how it's like bringing my cheekbones like forward and making them a little more square? Wow! The bases of the cheekbones are done. Now we're going to cut the jaw a little bit. Again, this is just the first layer, so we're going to go a lot more extreme with the other colors. To make your jaw more square, I bring it straight down. And see how that makes it a little more squared out? You'll be able to really tell when we get the other uh, contour colors in there. Repeat on the other side, and then taking it right under, almost to the edge of your face to create that really strong jawline. Then, going back to this brush, we're gonna do the lines in front that kind of really make it square looking. And every time I used to watch Vaude paint, they would do this. And so I just kind of like picked up on it. So the way you can like find those lines is by smiling. It also makes lip syncing look so much more crazy and exaggerated and effective because if it sits within like your natural shadows and like where your mouth is going to move, it just looks like, it just looks awesome. Just take my word for it. So you're gonna kind of like hit the top of the cheekbone right there. You're gonna wanna go straight, so don't keep your smile pulled that way the whole time, but just kind of like guesstimate where that falls. See how that works? But yeah, you're just gonna be doing like a straight line down. You wanna try to keep them even, obviously, so check in with where the other one is. The other line hits at the top. And like I said, if you need to clean up anything to make the line straighter, I'm cleaning up underneath a little bit of that. Also keep in mind, if they're not even, erase it a little bit. And there we go. See? I also like to do this thing that Vod taught me how to do, which is a little butt chin. You're gonna take the top of this and just and then we'll go in with darker shades to make that more detailed and pronounced. But I think it's a nice little touch. We're going to blend that up just a little bit, just a tiny bit. Then we're going to take the contour brush that we had before. And we're, we're not going to like connect this to the bottom of the jaw. But you can do two little things here. It's almost like an illusion. But now also, now my jaw is super square. You see that? Mm-hmm, right? See, it's becoming more square now. Next, we're gonna do the nose, which is arguably the hardest part. And it's gonna depend on what type of shape you're doing. You can put it into a lot of different shapes. But the basis is you're gonna go down the sides, starting in the eye socket, you can start a little farther away from the middle so you can give yourself, depending on like the size and shape of your nose, give yourself more um, room to make shapes and stuff. Again, depending on like how you want your nose shape to be. Obviously, if you want it more snatched, it's going to be like closer together, but you can always work up to that. Not perfect, but we're going to be making my nose in a more of like a angular masculine shape deep in the eye sockets and go above you're pretty much going i'm going like kind of like on top of my brow bone out like that i'm doing this real out of order <laughs> you kind of want to blend the nose contour into the top of the eye contour because it just makes it look more seamless and more real if that's what you're going for we are doing a real boy look today so that is what we're going for okay we'll get back to the eyes in a second i'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> So sides of the nose, not perfect, but we're gonna fix it later. You also wanna go around your nostrils here. Now we're also gonna take it under, underneath. Uh, 
I like to go up pretty high because I like that lifted look. Sometimes I do like a pixie nose, but I've been like really into this nose. I think this is a good, just like, you know, typical masculine, masculine nose. Vaughn and I do our nose shapes a little bit differently. So we're gonna go in kind of at an angle. See that? And then on the other side, to give more like angular shape to the nose. Then I like to go across here, like you're gonna be making a triangle type of thing, like that. It also kind of like helps lift the edges a little bit more. Wow, look at how different I look just from that. That's crazy. And then I'm gonna go here and then like that. Ooh, ooh. And then I like to go over it a little bit. Like that, does that make sense? So like over, over, out here, out here, diagonal, diagonal. And you know, you're gonna find what works best for your nose and your nose shape and stuff. And like, just play around and get creative, you know? Sometimes I shade the top like this, sometimes I don't. It depends on how I'm feeling. It depends on how much the paint is gonna let me get away with, you know? See that, that already looks so different. Now we're gonna take the contour and sweep it down from the bridge of our nose like sort of like outwards. I'm gonna go like this, like that. And that will also just kind of like blend it into the face more. Like that. Mm -hmm. Now time for Dick Schwager's favorite part, which is the forehead, which I can never do correctly. And I always mess up because my hair is gonna be down anyways. It's really gonna make your face look a lot more angular, especially obviously if you don't have hair covering it. See where like the side of your skull, there's like already a natural shadow going down. We're just gonna follow that and make a little L shape, backwards L shape. Uh-huh. See how that's bringing the forehead out forward and more square? You do gotta leave room for your eyebrows because your eyebrows are gonna be probably pretty big. Then we're gonna do an L shape here. Easy enough. Let's see if we can replicate that on the other side. Also, if you're not wearing a wig, you're gonna wanna put contour in your hairline, probably. I never do because that's just too much to deal with. So now we're gonna repeat on the other side. Follow the shadow. And put it over here. Also, the good thing about these, whatever the heck they're called, forehead thingies, is that once you do the highlighter, it's going to cut them out and make them look a lot better. So you don't have to worry about it too much right now. Oh gosh, here we go. Here we go. All right, okay, well, kind of. I know there's a lot of kings that will just connect those lines. The other part of how this is making it square is that masculine people typically tend to have much larger brow bones sometimes. I don't know, that's like a masculine trait, I guess. Yeah, so we're kind of like going just above like the actual furrowed brow type of, type of dealy. Next is eyes. So we already did the line going on top pretty much on your brow bone. We're gonna go underneath. We're gonna leave this part blank. We're gonna go on the outside underneath and kind of fill that outer corner with shadow. And that's gonna make your eyes look more like droopy and puppy dog looking. Cause a lot of masculine people have like more like puppy dog, kind of like droopy eyes. And every time I do my eye contour, I think of like, Seth Meyers. <laughs> I'll put a picture of him up here right now. Does he not have the most like puppy dog of eyes? I look at him and I'm like, yes, goals. That is what I'm trying to do with my eyes. Cause I like the whole puppy dog thing. So we're gonna connect it, do a little bit of shadow in the outer corner of the top, and then we're gonna drag it out. Let me show you on the other eye. So like I said, on the outer corner like this, and then we're gonna drag it out. You don't wanna lift it up like it's like a snatched cat eye type of deal. Go outwards. 
with it. Repeat on this eye. There we go. This is the first layer. Now let's move on to layer two. For layer two, we're gonna be using a couple different types of brushes. I'm gonna start with one like this. This is a uh, just a wet and wild one you can get at the Dollar Tree or what have you. We're gonna go in with a shade two to three times darker than the one that you just used for the base layer. We're gonna want it to be a little more dense. We want the bristles more concentrated so that it's like you're covering a smaller area. This is like a packing eyeshadow brush, one that you would use to pack on. But when you put it down on the skin like this, it's gonna give you a tighter line, not so tight, but a tighter line than a fluffy brush is going to give you. We're gonna go over the first layer of contour, but I want you to focus on where you're placing the darker color. We're gonna be placing the darker color closest to this side of the shadow that we put down. like that, so that there's a little bit of it faded out from the shadow that we put on before. See what I'm saying? And that's what's gonna create the dimension. There you go. Sometimes I like to put a little extra at the top and drag it out like just a little bit. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. But you see what I'm saying? How it's kind of like, blended out like that. You can even go over it with the other brush. Uh, I'm just kind of blend it. Then we're gonna do the rest under the lips. And then now we're gonna concentrate the darker color in the center. The center and the top of that shadow. See what I mean? See how there's a gradient? See, doesn't that give it so much more dimension? This is why I was freaking out the first time I followed their method, because I was like, whoa, what have I been doing this whole time? Now we're gonna, again, stick to the top of the shadow of your little dimple. And then, like I said, we're gonna go in with another even smaller brush to do all like the fine details in the end. For the in between the mouths, I'll just For the rest of the shadows, again, keeping just the edge of it like that for the forehead ones. You just gotta practice. Now we're gonna do the same on this one and we're gonna pray to the forehead gods that it doesn't look so bad and it's already looking uneven and we're gonna drop it down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Clean it all up. That looks way higher than this one. God damn it! Why? But why? Uh, uh, every time. All right, you know, we're just not gonna think about it. We're not gonna think about it. We're gonna blend it a little bit with that first brush. We're gonna do it like that, because of that does that, maybe? More like that. There we go, that looks, just try to like even them up, I guess. That looks better! All right! Now I'm gonna bring it down here. Then we're gonna blend that in a little bit. Next, you think I forgot about the cheekbones? I'm the cheekbone guy. Instead of going over the whole thing, and this is another trick that Vaude taught me that was like, made such a difference. Instead of going over the whole thing with the darker contour, we're gonna pack it on the bottom like we did before. And we're just gonna focus it on the very outskirts of town. And don't connect it, just leave it there. But see how that kind of like draws, oh, the weird perspective, it's doing weird things. It's doing weird things, it's being a weird guy. Just on the outsides and you bring it a little bit up. There we go, that's how you get the chiseled cheekbones, my guy. Clean up underneath if you want too far down. And there you go, see how much more angular, that's some like Lady Gaga cheekbones right now like the weird prosthetic ones that she had and if you want to blend this at all just go back in with the top of the brush that doesn't have the dark stuff on it and you can kind of like blend it into that a little bit all right we're a cheekbone guy then you're also going to take that dark and this time you can go across 
the board with this because you're kind of done with that color and we're going to cut out the jaw again. So from the top of your ear straight down and then straight across underneath. Like I said, some people go a little bit higher to really show that it's nice and sharp underneath. Mm -hmm. Then we can cut, we can go over these a little bit because it's been kind of softened out now. And now onto the nose. Gonna go back in with this guy. This guy is pretty good for most of the face. I'm gonna go into these little divots. I have these in my nose, so it's really easy to do that. Sometimes I'll I'll cross it over here, but I don't think I'm going to. Mm, 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 mm. Then we're gonna very carefully do the insides here. Make that very deep. Going to diagonal line here, diagonal line here, diagonal line here. We're kind of making like a diamond shape. Diagonal line here. See the diamond? Then we're gonna do across here and across here. And I'm not going to connect that just yet. And you'll see, I'll blend it in a second. Around the nose. And we're going to connect it to this shadow, essentially. See the difference? Kind of blend that in. We're gonna take this guy again and sort of blend that out and down. And that's how you kind of get the definition to where it looks more realistic. We're gonna blend on top of the, the little button nose sort of thing that we just made. And yeah, so now you can kind of see the remnants of those lines, but it doesn't look too harsh and it gives the shape. See? It took me a really long time to get this down, so do not be discouraged. And like I said, you can always do like a very simple sort of like pixie snatch or like however you do your normal nose contour because there's all types of noses, man. You just gotta go with what works. This is just what works for me. I actually have a little bit of a, I don't know if I would call it a bump, but it does go out a little bit. So for me, I feel like this suits my face because it's like close enough to what I already have. That's always the best way to start, I think, is try to start with like what you have to work with and what complements that. And then once you have practiced more, you can go into more creative shapes. When I did the nose for uh, Ice King, that was the first type of nose I'd ever done like that. And it was like very much based on Jarvis Hammer's nose. And it was so fun because I was just kind of like, whoa, this is not as intimidating or as hard as I thought it was gonna be. I was so proud of it. I was so proud of it. But again, the sort of angular super villainy nose, which I was, I've always been very intimidated by because like I said, you have to be very symmetrical. This nose is a little easier to get away with because, you know, it just looks like a masculine angular nose that's not, doesn't have to be perfect and it's not like straight lines or anything. When it's like straight lines down, especially depending on the geography of your nose, that can be a lot to take on for a beginner. So yeah, try to work with what you've got and then go from there. Oh, we're so close. We're so close to highlight. You can go into the smile lines and deepen them up just at the top. You definitely can do that, but I've been good with just the first layer on that. Or you can just take the first brush that has been on the deeper pigment without dipping back into the deep pigment and just focus it on the top. That way you get a little more dimension, but not too much. It gives for a more like youthful face. Again, depends on what type of look you're going for. Yeah, you can even go back into the darker color and really sort of like blend the edges and make them a little more profound. You know? Now we're going on to the eyes. Still using this brush with the deeper color. We're going to go under, just at the top of that shadow. Try to go at the top of the shadow. And then at the outskirts of town. I also kind of like to drag it down a little bit like that because I like to be a sleepy boy. I like eye bags and stuff. I think they're pretty. Can I blend that out a little bit? Seamlessness. Okay, so we're gonna go to the outer part of the eye now and 
keep that really dark. You see the difference between the two? We're also going to go to the very underside of this shadow and connect that and then gonna blend it out out and back out and back and don't worry about the lid because we're gonna go back in with either a concealer or with the Krylon. I think I'm gonna go in with concealer because at this point it's just gonna be look at what it's doing in my in my eyelids you know what I mean so now I'll repeat this eye on the other eye I'll be right back I'm also going to take a little lip brush kind of thing more precise brush and do the philtrum because you might not have to do the smile lines but the philtrum will make such a difference and then we're going to highlight it in the middle in a second too so you make like a little u shape kind of dealy and then you can kind of just like blend it at the top so now i believe it is time to do the highlight and you need to do highlight, especially if you're going on stage, because it's not going to be nothing without the highlight, baby. It really makes a difference. First things first, a cream highlight. So we did cream, then we did powder, and another shade of the powder. We're going back in with cream, baby. And it cleans up the lines beautifully. You will see in a moment, I promise you. For highlight, I do have another Krylon stick that is several shades lighter because I'm very pale but because I am very pale I can use white as a highlight and I think it just makes it a lot more jarring it makes the features that I've created stand out a lot more so with a lot of the highlighter we're gonna put it on thick and just barely blend the edges out or else it's gonna like blend too much into the foundation and it won't be as stark of a contrast as it needs to be and that's again something that you learn with time or if you have a drag dad like i do it's very important i think first we are going to highlight on the outside of the line that we just did here try not to get it going into the actual shadow i think i'm going to leave it on for a second and then try to blend it out with my fingies we got the two lines of highlight to contrast the contour there then we can take the butt of this blender load it up with some product i'm using clown white by the way mayron clown white light the little butt of this blender is perfect for placing on your cheekbones we're going to do them pretty forward instead of going to highlight the entire cheekbone we're going to focus right here because that's going to bring the cheek again forward with perspective or whatever again i don't really know what i'm talking about but i know that it works okay we're also going to use the butt to just highlight the outer corner of your jawbone and that's going to bring it outwards okay um i try not to fill this whole thing in with highlight i know a lot of kings do but this is going to give it more dimension or else, like, why would you have, like, a base foundation underneath? You know what I mean? A base color. See how I have more of a square jaw now? You'll see once it's all blended out. Then you'll see. You'll all see. All right. Um, then we're going to do underneath the shadow for the chin. We're going to do these little, whatever they're called, the little flappies, the lip flappies. <laughs> Bottom lip flappies. It'll be symmetrical, we'll get there. We're gonna do the on top of the upper lip and around the philtrum and the cupid's bow. You also wanna keep in mind how big you're drawing your lips. Like if you're overdrawing your lips, you might wanna do this just a little, have it set a little higher than normal because if you're overdrawing your lips, it's going to cut into that area and then your lip won't look as like lifted as it should. Then in between the forehead thingies. Aha! Yes! All right. Then the nose can tend to get a little too oily to put more cream as the highlight on there. So... I think I'm just going to go in with white shadow for that. A lot of people will do their brow bone up here too. I'll do it right now. So even though we're not doing the shadow all the way across, the highlight is all the way across and that will bring it out a little bit more. And then you can drag it down just a little bit into the nose area. 
I'm going to take a white eyeshadow on my fingy and do the tip. Keep in mind, we still haven't powdered any of this down. And once we blend it out and powder it down, it's going to look so seamless. That's a nose. I'm kind of lazy when it comes to this part, actually, to be honest. So now use the edge of this little beauty blender for a lot of the stuff. Just blend out the edges. We'll go over and fix stuff if we need to. But I like to use my finger, just the outside edges. The intensity of it is still gonna be there. I'll just go over the edges of that with the beauty blender a little bit. And you know, after having all this basic, like main highlight on, especially after you've powdered it down, you can kind of go over it at the end with super stark, not blended out at all white. Or, you know, again, with the darker contour too. I see a lot of kings do that and it looks really good. We still have to do the eyes, but I like to set everything down at this point. I usually just use my beauty blender to set everything down to like bake it into the skin. So I'm gonna pick up a good amount of powder we're going to set the highlights first so that we don't get any of the darker contour color on the sponge while we're setting and then like muddying it up. You know what I mean? Okay, now all over the face. <laughs> while your face is baking, now we're gonna go do the eyes. And I think I'm gonna use a white highlighter for this. A white concealer. It doesn't have to be white. It can be just like lighter than your foundation color again, but I'm gonna do white. ColourPop white concealer. We're gonna take concealer brush and this makes such a difference. I'm gonna show you how to do it on the right side of my eye and then you'll see from the left side. But you're gonna kind of cut your crease a little bit, but only halfway. You're gonna go under here and you're gonna look forward and see where your eye hits and you're gonna go a little bit higher than where your lid hits because the whole thing with drag is exaggerating your features. And even this is like barely exaggerating them. Like there's a lot of drag kings that exaggerate their features a lot more than I do. But just for like a real boy look, just for starting out, you know, I also do this in my everyday makeup too sometimes. You're just gonna wanna make it hit a little bit higher than your natural crease so that it makes your eyes look a lot more open. You're gonna go to the middle of the eye and then stop and pat it out. But like, look at that, look at the difference. You see? Then we're gonna go underneath. So sort of like the inner corner slash underneath Like that. See? I'm gonna do the other eye and come back. Now what I should have done before cutting the crease was going with the red, like I was planning on doing, but I got too excited. It's okay though. We're going to, after we've done the white on that, we're gonna set that down. We're gonna use this brush. It already has a little bit of pink on it. Red, orange, and peach. Let's start at the bottom under eyes sort of area. Again, you should do this before you cut the crease with the concealer. I messed up, but it's okay. We're gonna put this kind of warm tone into the rest of the contour and it's just gonna bring it to life here. You'll see in a second. I'm sure you're already starting to see it. The outer corner might be a little too much. You can go back over it with that first like base color. And yeah, definitely do this before cutting the crease. I messed up, okay? Now that we have a little bit of red in there, it's kind of a little pinky, but that's fine. We're going to add our like black detail detail stuff. You want to be very careful with this black if you're using any Juvia's Place eyeshadow because it's so pigmented. I'm going to put black on the very bottom outer like that. Sometimes actually I'll do a little bit of uh, eyeliner and go in the very outer corners. Take in one of these smudgy type brushes or like a packer brush with black. And we're gonna put that on the bottoms. We're gonna go back with this sort of smaller brush and we're gonna go inside 
and connect this line right here to the mess we have on the outside. And then drag it down a little bit. You'll feel your eye socket and that's where you wanna drag it down from. We're gonna take that black and put it on the outskirts again. And then you can either use your fluffy brush to blend all that out or I have another sort of like tapered packing brush type of thing that already has some gray on it and I'm just going to use that to drag and blend it out a little bit before I even go in with a fluffy anything just to soften the edges of all of that. See? Again, you could definitely do this step too before you cut any of the stuff that I just cut with the concealer. Then yeah, I am going to use this fluffy brush that has the taupe kind of color on it. You don't have to go so dark with the black. You could also use like a dark gray instead. You can also go back with the red, orange, and peach combo and really kind of like blend that in so that it looks more like natural and like a shadow. Taking that brown slash black just into the deep recesses of your mind, no, of uh, your eye sockets. We're creating some dimension, hey? And then again, clean up with the concealer. There we go. At this point, I also like to do a little bit on the outer corners, on the top lid. Take some more of that black and just like kind of bring it up, but not really. Blend it out. These are like very easy eyes that we're doing right now. I like to bring it really like far down like this. Sometimes I do it with liner. Sometimes I'll just do it with shadow. Then I'm gonna take waterproof eyeliner, black eyeliner, and just do the inner corners. Oh shoot, here we go. Yep as even as you can do it. I don't know if that makes sense, but bring it up a little bit on the inside of the eye and see what a difference that makes. Hey, we're getting somewhere. Then take your black eyeliner and go in the waterline, but just the outsides to match where we've deepened that right here. Are we seeing the optical illusions? At this point, it's time for brows. And everyone's been asking me for brow tutorials for a long time. You're gonna need a little baby angled brush like this. This is what's really gonna start to make your masculine face come together. Hang with me, we're almost done. I promise you we're almost done. I'm gonna take this dark gray. You always wanna start with a lighter base layer. See, my natural brows are quite dark brown, but they're not exactly black, and so I don't really have to cover them, I can just like paint over them. I prefer to shave them off entirely, but I can't really do that right now because of work things. But yeah, you're gonna start with a lighter color. That way when we draw the deeper strokes with the black eyeliner, and you can usually pretty much for drag in my opinion, you can do this for any color brow that's matching any wig just because it makes it look more cartoony and more stage friendly and it'll pop out more while you're on stage. You know what I mean? And that's the whole point. All right, masculine brows typically sit lower. I'm gonna bring my brows down a little bit lower here, almost to where the top of the fake crease is that we made. And I'm gonna start pointing it up around here, kind of like where my natural arch starts to form gonna fill that in a little bit. So now that you have it more deep set, I use the tip of the brush to start at my front of my brow and whisk it up like that. And you keep making strokes like that. You want your brows to be quite big anyway, so you know, go ham, fill it in a little bit more. And when you're at that point, I do like to do a little flick to make them look unruly and wolfy. Next, we're going to connect this up top and we're going to go kind of like at an angle and then bring that down. But that's the basic shape. So now I'm going to repeat what I did on the other side and I'll see you in a second. So 
this is what we got. This is what we're working with. Taking my waterproof black eyeliner pen. You've got to use one that's kind of stiff, especially if you have eyebrows, because the hairs will kind of like mess up where you're going with it. You know what I mean? You got to get like a felt tip liner pen, in my opinion, to do it like this. So first we're going to start with the wispies this way. And you don't have to go over the exact lines that you've already done because the other ones will act as like sort of shadows again for that dimension. But just kind of get it in the same direction going. I'm gonna go underneath and make like tiny strokes. Back through the tail, point it down like this. For the hardest part, we're going to start over here and flick over here. Clean it up a little bit over here. And that's pretty good. I'm going to call it a day with that and do the other side. But see how the negative space is making it look more bushy, especially from far away? Yeah! So we're gonna wait for those to dry down. We are going to powder over them just so that they last all night through your performance, what have you. Now we're gonna powder these puppers down now that they're dry. And while those are cooking, I think we're gonna go back and do the rest of the face. I'm gonna take a fluffy powder brush kind of thing and just dust that all off. You can see how seamless everything is looking now, right? Now you can stop with the contour here. You can definitely stop with the contour here. But what I think makes it look realistic and especially better for stage is like I did with the eyes, I go in with a little bit of red, orange, and peach. It's gonna be even fainter for the contour because you don't want too much of it in there. And then I go in with a little bit of the darkest gray. Sometimes I go in with black, but like I said, this one is just so pigmented. This one is just kind of like regular black. You know what I mean? So we're gonna go in with that little brush again and just barely go into the contour. Ooh, that's a little too much, but it's okay. And you can kind of lay off the, the cross on the nose because we just want a little bit of a shadow there. You know what I mean? You go a little bit, but that's basically it. Blend it down a little bit. And you can definitely put some of that red into the nose bridge kind of thing because then that you look like a cute little blushy boy. Like you're blushing. Like you got a secret. Oh, I need a brush. Ooh. I'm on that ooh woo shit. <laughs> We're gonna add a little bit with this fluffy brush so as to not be so concentrated with the shadows and the pigments. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Little bit over here, a little bit over here. Even the tiniest bit for me dimple. Gonna go back in with the fluffy brush over here. That's a lot, uh, that is a lot, and that is a lot, but it is okay. And then we're also gonna go a little bit. And again, you can stop at any point if you're a quitter, but I'm not a quitter and I'm gonna add a little bit of the dark gray into my contours so that you can see me from across the room if I am performing. Okay, I have another little pencil brush type of deal and I think I'm gonna use that. Again, just the very tippy tip. We'll blend that out in a second. I'm gonna go back in with that little red brush that we were using. There we go! Using a rounder brush like this. To... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that? See the difference? And you can go over and blend it with some more of that. I think I'm gonna use this one, yeah, for the filtrum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use a smudgy brush for my nose, but first, because I know this has black on it, I'm going to use it for this. 
again, not completely connecting it underneath. See how it gives it that shape though? We can blend it out in a second. Going back in with that pencil brush around the nostrils. And like I said, connecting it over here. You see that? Uh-huh. Connecting it. And then we're going to kind of like smudge that all out in a second. We're going to take that one brush that we went in with the second contour color and work on smudging that out and blending the lines. I also did forget to highlight these little guys so that they stick out wider. I'm going to use my white powder, my white uh, eyeshadow for that again. See how that brings them out to the world, for the world to see. Gonna do the forehead ones. Now we gotta do the job. You can use black or you can use this dark gray. Really cut it. A lot of kings will use just black to make a really sharp jawline. I'm not going to do sideburns because uh, my hair covers that. I kind of have sideburns with the way I've cut my hair. But you know, if you guys want a sideburn tutorial, you should not go to me because I don't, <laughs> I don't typically do them. It's kind of a lot like how I do my brows, but in the shape of a sideburn. So look up some sideburn pictures on Google Images and just have at thee. And take a makeup wipe. And just cut it. To where it's even. So now it's clean. Uh, a lot of kings like to go a little farther down their jaw to make it very cut. It's up to you. Play around with it. See what you like. I kind of like it like this. A little more clean cut. We're almost there. Now that the brows are baked, we're going to take a little fan brush and just get all of that powder out of there. There we go. Now we're going to take the water activated paint and highlight a little bit with that. Okay, I just really quickly washed out that concealer brush I was using before. Since we're using water activated paint, it doesn't have to dry. It's perfect. Just going to dip it into the water activated paint, get a thick sort of thing going. I'm going to wipe it on the back of my hand to see if it's opaque enough and to also like get the excess off. Then I'm just going to go under like that. Repeat to the other side and pat it in a little bit. And instead of highlighting completely under the brow, I just do this little like underneath the arch part because under the brow is supposed to be like deep set. So I don't want that highlighted. Then I'm going to do the outside, just a little line. You can also kind of like shape things up if you need to. You don't have to go as high as that. Sometimes I go just from the middle down. And again, like the stark contrast of it is going to help it be seen from far away and help it be more impactful. You see that? Now those are some eyebrows. Enough of that. Not perfect, but it'll do. I like that this one is more straight than this. But you know what? Again, it's going under a wig probably or my hair. So I don't really give a shit. Just look at this one. This is the one that works. Don't look at that one. Now, don't forget to do lashes. Don't forget to do mascara because then your eyes are gonna get lost in all of this. I just focus on like closest to the lash line and not really the tips of it, you know? So I don't curl my lashes. Definitely I don't curl my lashes. Ow. <laughs> but I stick to closest to the lash line and you see the difference between that, especially if you don't have eyeliner on the top. Look at what that does. This is the Essence uh, Fancy Lash Princess. Mesh mascara. The one from my holiday uh, gift guide. Let me know if you guys want me to do more like videos like that because I'm happy to give suggestions for products that I like. Oh, we're going to take this white eyeliner really quick and 
highlight that. I do have a tutorial for stubble. I've put it on all my platforms, so just look for it. Um, I'll repost it after I post this on Instagram, but yeah, it's in my YouTube shorts, it's in my TikTok, it's in my Instagram. Probably the easiest way to find it is here on YouTube. For lips, gonna moisturize those little guys. Oh, and for a natural, for a boy lip, Daydream by ColourPop. I'll put that on, blend it out. Once that's pretty much set, I need some more of this and I'm praying to Satan that they make more, that they still carry this color. Uh, but this is Corset by NYX Lip Lingerie and I need it. I need it! We're gonna first put it all over in a very thin layer and pat it out. Just watch what I do. That will kind of mute it. Then we're gonna go back in and we're gonna sort of like line your lips with it. Just watch, watch what I do. I'm gonna line it and then just tap it out to blend it. But yeah, corset is like a beautiful pale, like dead boy color, sort of like early 2000s, um, <laughs> early 2000s lipstick. I'm laughing because one time I was at a sleepover and I had like a concealer with me, but it was in like a doe foot applicator. And I guess like that was around the time that those were first coming out like that, like with that doe foot thing, because usually just like lip gloss came like that. And I brought it to my friend's house and I walked in and all my friend using it on her lips because she thought it was like, <laughs> she thought it was lipstick. And I'm like, that's my concealer that I put on my pimples. Like what the fuck? And I just remember being like, concealer on her lips. I know people used to do that, like they used to actually put concealer on their lips, but she legitimately thought it was lipstick and it still makes me laugh to this day. Oh my god. Anyways, now we're gonna go in, I think I'm gonna go in a little bit and make the cupid's bow a little more pronounced. While we're there, actually, we're gonna take Revolution Set the Tone highlighter. Like that, and then fix the lip. I think that's fine. Okay, the last, last step is gonna be highlighter. Again, with the set the tone that we used for the Cupid's bow, we're gonna go under the chin again. Sorry, I just had to deepen up that chin contour. I don't know what happened. So under the chin, like that, we're gonna take our highlight brush Go on top of those, and then on top of the nose. You can go over here if you want to. You don't have to, but you can. I lied, I lied, one more thing. We're just gonna go back in with black. Just in the very corners. And let me do my hair and everything, and I'll be back. And there we are. Shake and go, more like shake and no. Come on, man. All right, so excuse the wig. I usually use like shake and go wigs and I literally just bought this one. It's cute though, right? I kind of miss having red hair. I haven't had fully red hair like this since, uh, mm, I think since high school. Wow, it's a commitment. It's a commitment and it's a lot of money with the upkeep and stuff, but it's cute. I like it, I like it as a wig. Anyways, this is the look my basic real boy face that kind of like goes underneath even the more intense stuff that I do. I'm hoping to do more of that this year. If you liked this video and you're looking for more like drag tips, I'm going to be putting out a lot more tutorial kind of stuff this year. This is going to be the first one. I'm going to be doing a lip syncing tutorial. I'm going to be doing the anatomy of a drag number, the anatomy of a group number even. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or if you have any ideas of stuff that you want to see me do. I'd love to keep that in mind. And yeah, catch you later, my fellow kids. How do you do, fellow kids? Uh. <laughs>